All right, today I'd like to show you how to go through and uh, do the trace or the live trace on the Superman logo. I know that uh, we've covered that recently in class, but it's a little easier if you can kind of pop back and take a look at a video. So let's go ahead and open up Adobe Illustrator. And you can see with Adobe Illustrator, we go ahead and create new. Come in here again across the top here, we want to go to print because we're doing this for our graphic arts class. We're going to call this. Superman logo. Again, change from points to inches. And the reason we do that is we know that now it's at eight and a half by eleven. That's our letter size over here. We're familiar with that scale. Go down, hit create. At this point here, um, we'll go look through the process here. Right now we've got our base layer, our bottom layer. Right here we have our layers properties up here. So we're on that first layer. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and put the Superman logo on here. So over in the file menu, you can come down to place. Now within our stuff that we have here, um, if you remember, we're pulling stuff off the apps cache O drive, which is right here on mine. You may have to go to this computer and do that. Uh, go to the graphic arts, come down here, take a look. Here's my Superman logo right there. And hit place and what it will do is it'll give you an opportunity to place that in there this size is fine now if you want to go ahead and stretch that you can click onto the corner here and then push if you push down on the shift key you can see it'll proportionally scale that so we'll leave that at that size right there this document right now we don't want to do any playing with we want to leave it alone we'll center it towards the top here because we're going to end up making a positive and negative as well. But we got to put another layer on here. So we'll come up to the layers command here. You can see that we've got our, again, our Superman layer. You can see that it's here. I'm going to click right here where it's a black space. There's no, nothing there. And I'm going to turn on the padlock. This keeps that layer locked so we don't accidentally draw on it. Now down below here, you can see along the bottom here, we can create a uh, sub layer or a layer by picking on the right icon here. So we're going to go ahead, it says create new layer. You can see up here on the layer now, if I double click on here, it says layer two. I'm going to call this, um, you could call it the pen layer or tracing layer. I'm going to call it tracing layer, layer. And we'll do all our tracing on there. You can pick the color. Black turns up really nice. Going through the process, you can just leave the rest of this alone. Hit OK. And now my live layer is using black. When I use my pen tool, and it's a tracing layer. So at this point in time, all we need to do is start to look at doing our tracing process. We're going to use the pen tool for that. Before I get started with that, I'm going to go ahead up on here. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Plus. And I'm going to zoom in. It's so much easier to zoom in and do this process. So we'll zoom in a little bit more. Control plus again is the key shortcut I'm using. You can see we're zoomed in. Let's go to the pen tool. We want to click on and find spots along the outside edge here. Click the closest you can to the corners. Now you can see what's happening as I'm going around. The fill pattern is filling this. You go to properties, go to the fill box here, and go to the red line, no fill. And that will give us our image back. Oh, I missed that. Let's try that one more time here. There we go. And again, take your time. There you can see that it locked on to the previous one. Now this is one whole object. We can fill that like, you know, we shut that off, but I can go ahead and say I want to fill that with white or black. And you can see it fills it. There's a little bit of a bleed on the edge here. I'm not going to worry about that. But there again, we have that on the object. So we're good there. We've got that in there. Now the next thing we want to do is trace around our yellow areas that are on here. So we've got one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. Now hopefully at this point you've gotten somewhat comfortable with using the pen tool. And again, I like to actually zoom in even more. So I'm going to go ahead. I've got the pen tool activated. I'm going to click down here in the corner. I'm going to go ahead and control plus. 
And by going Control Plus, you can see what it does is it knows that I'm here. So I'm going to zoom in where you clicked in. So there we go. There we go. There we go. And remember with the curve, we're coming back to the end. And now we're going to hold down on that button to create a curve here with our handle. So at this point, we're looking pretty good. That is all done. I can hit the select tool here. Now right here, when we're looking at making our positive or negative, we can go ahead and color this in. I'm going to go in to the fill command here, and I'm going to color it black. And you can see we're not quite perfect, but we're close enough. If you need to tweak it, right along over here, we've got our direct select tool. Our direct select tool, when we click on it, you can see right here, I can actually grab and then move some of these anchor points around. I can make some adjustments to, to those things. So from that perspective, you can make those adjustments. But this gives me a good idea of how close I am. Uh, and again, for our demonstration here, we're just kind of walking through the process. So there's my first part right there. Now, again, I like to kind of work my way in. I like to do the straight lines and then the curved ones. So let's work over here again, back to our pen tool. Click on a corner, another straight line, another straight line. And you can see it wants to fill it. That's kind of interfering. So again, we take that fill off. So we can see where we're going with this because I'm going to click and hold now. Let's try that again. Click, there we go, and hold. And because we're trying to bend that curve again, Click and hold gives us the handles, so we can go ahead and do that process. That looks pretty good. We're close enough. Right now, when we start looking at our tools, I'm going to try and move this down. There we go. If we look at our tools over here, you can see that the stroke is really, really thin. I can adjust that stroke to make it thicker, and we can kind of fill in a little bit with the lines as we need to. Um, but for what we're trying to do to get this trace close, we want to have a very thin or hairline, and that's where that real thin line comes in. So we're good enough for there. Again, we're done with that object. Now we can go ahead and start down. And again, pen tool still on. We can start here, click a line, click a line. And again, these are all nice straight lines, easy to do. Click and let go. Click and let go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start curving the line here. Do we don't wanna go way over here? We're trying to just create the curve here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click there and drag and just kind of bend it a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good. You can see I'm still on that string mode, so to speak. And again, I'm gonna click over here and I'm just gonna give it some guidance. You know, can we come up here and click and drag? I think we're pretty good here. There we go. And again, uh right about there okay right about there and we're going to come back to that original anchor point oh not sure what i did file edit undo delete anchor somehow i deleted the anchor so at this point we're close now i talked earlier about using the direct select tool just clicked and activate that if I want to click and drag and move something, okay, somehow I'm not selecting this. Let's go ahead and escape. There we go. So now I've selected this line. I can go ahead and grab the handles and take and turn and move those a little bit. I can grab the handle here, move that up a little bit. We can come back and adjust them using the direct select tool. The select tool will select the whole object to resize and things like that. When I want to tweak and adjust stuff in here, the direct select tool works for that. So this looks good. Let's go on down towards the bottom here. Again, we're just scrolling down. Let's do the easy one here. So I'm back to the pen tool. Again, I'm going to click here in the corner, 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 and click and hold. Because again, we need to make that curve. Looks good. And again, here, we're going to do the same thing up here. So again, I'm going to click here. I'm going to click up here. Again, click out, bend that line a little bit. This one is a little bit particular. 
I'm gonna bring it about right there, I think. And maybe right about there. And right about there. You're gonna click here. Now coming up here, we're gonna try and curve it over to the top a little bit here. That looks pretty good. And then we're gonna curve it there. Perfect. So we've got basically our, our basis coverage here. Now we're going to zoom out. So I'm going to hit control negative, zoom out, see where we're at with stuff. Looks good so far. Let's go ahead and look at starting to color some stuff in here. So again, I have no fill on here, but I can go ahead and click and fill that with black. And again, we can come back and tweak it a little bit, but this is good enough for what we're doing now. Again, direct select tool I can select this area here up oh, and undo a new pen not sure there let's try that again there we go so I'll select and fill there I use my just straight select tool because it's selecting the whole object that's where I should have been telling you to go again up here click on there fill Now, if you're worried a little bit about the little yellow that pops out, I'm not going to worry about it. But if you want to say, oh, let's see if we can fill that in. If you select this one, for instance, and come here to the stroke, if you remember the stroke, we can go ahead and thicken that up. So let's go to 75. Still a little, see a little bit of yellow. Uh, how about two points? The yellow disappeared. So here, that's one of the tricks that we can do, so to speak is we can thicken up the stroke of the line. I've got two strokes there, that looks good. And again, increase the stroke thickness. So there, we're just making the line wider. And now that smoothness is coming through. Same thing here, fill up the stroke. Two seems to be my magic number today. There we go, fill. And let's widen the stroke a little bit. There we go. Now that outside edge over here, we should be able to select that outside edge. There it is. And let's go ahead and make that stroke like two. And now you can see that we have that fully traced out. It looks nice. At this point, we need to go through and do a copy and paste function. We're going to take this, so to speak, and move it down now right now I've got the Superman logo on behind there if I take the layer command and say okay right here let's make that disappear just click poke them in the eye and you can see that disappeared this could be a proof positive or negative I look at it as being a positive um, so let's say I'm doing screen printing the black area here is what I'm blocking out and the, the white area here's where I want to print so there again, you could do the S as a logo. This whole process, though, we want to also make a negative. So the white area turns black, and then the black area turns white. That's pretty easy to do. The first thing we have to do is use a select tool. We're going to draw a box. Draw a box around it. So we're going to select everything in there. And we're going to hit the object up here. And we want to tell it to group it all together. Because all these little individual pieces were all separated. Now it's grouping all the objects. If I go to edit and go to copy, now I've copied all those objects. I'm going to go edit now again and go to paste. And there, pasted a new one. Now we have the opportunity to take and move this. Let's grab and move it down. There we go. So the S here is white. Let's turn the S here black. Now, I'm going to go ahead and down here, before we do anything else, we need to separate those pieces back out again. So we have it selected already. Go to Object, and we're going to Ungroup. And now when we look at this, this is an individual object again, and so is this. So now we're going to turn the white things to black and the black things to white. So I'm going to go ahead and start that process. And again, we're going back to Properties. If you come here and click on, there we go. So the group select there, we can take that fill pattern and change that to white. 
select this one here, fill pattern, change it to white. And again, same thing here, fill pattern to white, fill pattern to white. So all we're doing is just flipping the color from white to black and black to white. Uh, white, there we go. And the overall one on the outside here, we can get that to select. There we go. That outside pattern here was white. We need to turn that black. Oh, what happened? It's over the top. Okay, so what happened here is we've got a little layer issue where um, we have to go ahead and take this layer and move it to the back and move these other parts of the layers to the front. So under object, you can see here we've got a range. Bring front, bring front, send back, send back. So that part here, we're going to go ahead. Oh, jumped off there. Sorry. We're going to go ahead and say it, send it to the back. Send that backwards. Now, when we fill that, keep your fingers crossed. Oh, it's still in the front. Try that again. How about object arrange? Send backwards. No, it's not working. So let's do this. Go fill pattern. No fill. All right, looking at here. Select is on there. Okay. On the right stuff here. Let's see. Looks like I was in a sub layer. Let's try it this way. There we go. So I jumped into the sub layer somehow. This is what that negative should look like. So again, here in the middle of the S here, turn white. And everything that was behind there within that diamond area, we took and changed that color to the black. You take a look at it, it can say, hey, this is a positive and this is a negative, or this is a positive, this is a negative. Now if I'm teach or if I'm going to make this for a screen print, and I'm going to put the Superman logo on my chest, so to speak. This area here, where it's black, we could print um, what is it? Red? Yeah, was red in the picture originally. So we could do a color separation, and then the parts here where it's white, we could turn those black on the other screen, and then we could print um, yellow or whatever we have for that original look. So there's, we got the red here in the, the S area. So that would be the red and the yellow area would be the white area. The other thing is that we do is I usually, I like to have like a proof positive what it actually looked like to begin with. We do have that behind there. Um, you could leave it up on the top and then move the top. Let's see if we can do that real quickly here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to select. Um, let's go ahead and select that top object. So draw a window around it, pick that, go to, uh, let's go uh, see, it looks like it is grouped already. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and see if we can move it. I'm going to zoom out, control negative, and let's see if we can get that original one. We'll leave the Superman there and we'll just move the one down. So I'm going to go ahead, let's see, we select the object. And we're going to go ahead and click and move it. Oh. There we go. And there we've got it. So there's the Superman logo. If I wanted to do that screen print, like I said, we can do the red area here by using this part. So we color separated the red out. And then the yellow here, again, here would be our second screen. And that would block out and just have the yellow here um, where the black areas are. So there again, that's how we do it. We can do a color separation. If I'm making a flexography plate, then I'm going to use probably this one. Or I could use this one depending upon what I want to stamp out on the picture. Last thing we need to do is simply put our name on here. Again, I'm going to come down towards the bottom of the sheet here. We'll take the text block. We'll put that on down here. 
and I'm going to zoom in, Control Plus, because it's way too far for us to see. And again, I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and we'll go ahead and put on there um, the name. Superman, and then uh, logo, and it was, this is a, this is actually positive negative. So Superman logo positive and negative separation. So I'm going to click that, separate them out. Let's take all three of those lines. And let's see, go back to properties. Because now I'm looking right here at the properties of the, the print. And let's see here, my picture's in the way again. Let's go ahead and center the paragraph there. Looks good. Myriad Pro is fine. You could change the text if you want. 12 points, fine too. If you want a little bit bigger, then we have to adjust the whole box. So it's like, ah, oh, let's just leave it at, at 12. Perfect. All right. That looks good. So that's how we do Superman.